It is a documentary about the Doors as narrated by he himself, Johnny Depp. Here's a clip. Like the Beatles and Rolling Stones before them, they perform live on the Ed Sullivan show. I knew Sullivan asks the Doors to take out the word higher because of its drug implications. They agree. During the performance, Jim sings the song exactly as written. A story which I think we have all heard several times, along with the fact that when Elvis went on, he wasn't allowed to be shown below. There's a very funny Ray Lowry cartoon with uh, Elvis in the 1950s or was being told, I'm sorry, we can only show you from the uh, waist upwards because of your lewd and disgusting hip movements. And then Elvis in the 1970s, I'm sorry, we can only show you from the waist upwards because of your ridiculous flared trousers. The problem, I think, I think we could maybe, because uh, this is being videoed, of course, yeah. people could watch this. You should be shot from the neck up so people can't see your flappy hands. Very good. Thank you very what much. What do you think? Would that work? Yeah, uh, hilarious. The problem with... With, uh, well, there's many problems with uh, When You're Strange, a film about the Doors. Uh, w- not least that I do think that Jim Morrison is a pret- was a pretentious nitwit. And my my interest in the Doors is passing. He did a few good pop songs. And when I was watching that Oliver Stone movie, you know, which was... Uh, have you ever read that book, No One Here Gets Out Awake, Alive? You read that no, one? but it's, it's a like, joke that you like to make I do like time to make the Doors. It, yeah. Have you ever read up. any of Jim Morrison's poetry? No, just no. enjoy the records. Yeah, fine. Ex- exactly. Some of them, good pop records. Hello, I love you, good pop record. Riders on the Storm. Riders are perfectly fine. Not a great pop record, but a decent pop record. But the big problem is that this whole thing is, I mean, it's directed by Tom DeCillo, who I like very much. They haven't gone the route of um, doing um, interviews. What they've done is archive uh, footage and, you know, recreating footage, got stuff together, put it all together and had it narrated by Johnny Depp, but in these incredibly sombre tones. Now, the only way you could actually get away with doing a documentary about this is to, is to be funny, because the fact of the matter is, if you don't find Jim Morrison passingly funny, he was just a flatulent old bore for most of the time. But this is delivered in such incredibly portentous and reverential tones that even the things that you know already seem incredibly boring. There's a bit at the beginning that says, at the age of 14, he was already reading Baudelaire, you know, Nietzsche, blah. You go, yeah, fine, I don't care. That's like the whole thing about, you know, yeah, well, I could play Stare at Heaven when I was 16. Jimmy Page didn't write it till he was 27. I think that says quite a lot. There's one moment in which we are told very, very somberly that in the middle of recording of the LA Woman or whatever it is, he said, as Jim started repeating the phrase, Mr. Mojo Rising. He then wrote the letters down on a piece of paper and showed them to his friend. And the letters then animate in terms of Mr. Mojo Rising is an anagram of Jim Morrison. You go, yeah, well, you know, Finsbury Park backwards is crappy Rob Sniff. It doesn't make it intelligent. It's just, it's fine. So I, could guy mention, could... I could mention Newark at this point, but we probably shouldn't. Newark? Yeah, carry on. Oh, okay, fine. So, so for one thing, I didn't think it had any sense of humour at all. I mean, I like Tom DeChillo as a filmmaker very much and stop smirking at me because I don't understand the joke that you just made. It's just and... an anagram, that's all. I, I, for some okay. reason, I can't get there at all. Do you know That's what Robertson's good. Marmalade is backwards? Ed Lamram Snostrable. Um, and so I'm watching this all the way through thinking, what you need is a sense of humour. And what I'm actually reminded of is I once had an argument with Camille Paglia. And how many sentences start like that? I had an argument with Camille Paglia in which she had argued in an essay that what rock music needed... Who is she? She's a very famous writer, Camille Paglia. Um, she, right. she, uh, what rock needed was rock academies so that people could go and learn poetry in order to produce more rock musicians like Jim Morrison, who were poetic. And I said, well, actually, that's the kind of place you want to burn to the ground. What we need is more washboard Sams, people who could barely write their, you know, write their name... But but knew how to turn a good tune. And I sat there thinking, if you love Jim Morrison and if you think that he's completely wonderful and total, you know, you, what you want is a hagiography hey hey delivered by somebody in incredibly sombre tones and you're going to get that. If, like me, you think that for most of the time he was a bloated old fool, then you are just going to get increasingly annoyed by the unbelievably serious tone of the film and the incredibly sort of sanctimonious oh it's so great and it reminded me of watching the Oliver Stone movie in which I did think Val Kilmer was perfectly cast as a guy who was so full of himself he didn't know which way to turn it's like that Elvis Costello joke you know they say that travel broadens the mind till you can't get your head out of the door well that was a problem that Jim certainly suffered from Mr. Jimbo Jimbo he he created this character Jimbo people didn't know where it came from but when he came out they knew bad things were going to happen you go yeah like the third album but never mind so your so your dislike and disquiet with this uh, with this film is pretty much based on the fact that you don't like Jim Morrison it's which the, seems a little bit unfair on the movie it's that really. if you want you can make a film about people you don't like but you have to have a sense of distance you have to have a sense of you know you have to have a sense of fun you have to have a sense of something actually being amusing there it, the fact of the matter is most rock stars are essentially stupid and 
if you don't have a sense of that. I mean, I love Elvis, but any documentary that didn't understand that Elvis falling over on stage in the 70s was funny wouldn't be worth anything.